guys and today's video I'm pretty much here with the ice three on a rainy day yes you pretty much hear what's going on back there and uh, yeah it's uh it, it's very rainy and I don't really want to work on the e91 m3 right now mainly because it is freezing in here but at the same time I do want to film a video for you guys because this is a video I've been trying to film for a very long time now uh, you guys will literally see by the footage or some of the footage was actually recorded months ago when I had an older car and then the rest of the footage is uh, right now so it is in a span of like four months in this one video mainly because I want to test out this new product that I picked up for the i3 and I want to give you guys kind of like an honest review of it um, but uh, yeah today's video is pretty much talking about why I think the i3 is the best car enthusiast car out there I have an e91 m3 right over here which is a v8 m3 wagon that I'm currently working on for those of you guys who are new to the channel I'm looking to purchase an Audi R8 I have a v8 truck we have a Supra in the family and we have a couple other like we even have a v8 550 in the backyard we absolutely love our v8s and our hopefully v10s and uh, they're amazing cars but ultimately to enjoy and drive these cars on the weekends to build these cars um, that as, as, as unreliable as they are we need something that will get us around not cost us much and not have any headaches which is the perfect car which is the i3 right over here I actually purchased this car so I actually purchased the BMW i3 for two reasons I'll actually get into that in a little bit but the main thing is I purchased this car to kind of relieve all that headache of my project cars as my daily commuters if I need to get things done I don't have to have my cars running to get that stuff done Having a daily that's actually very reliable and won't actually make you feel like you have to modify it. The i3 is one of those cars that look like a toaster regardless so um, there's nothing you really can do about it every car I end up buying I want to modify it the i the i3 um, I'm just gonna keep the stock because because I think any more modifications I want to do to it it's gonna make it look ugly so that's actually one of the main reasons I actually got the car uh, because first off it is reliable um, and the second off um, I don't have, really have to modify it and waste money on it because I, I just don't need to now let's just go ahead and start talking about the i3 and things I absolutely love about it first things first you guys can see is just the way the pack out system is inside of the BMW i3 the pack out system is basically a system from Milwaukee that you can put your tools inside I actually have a bit on top right there as well because I actually go out for a lot of pick and pull runs and it's super handy to actually have something like this where you can pretty much release this handle bring it upwards roll it around you have your tools in the bottom and you have a bin right here and it fits so perfectly into this car as if this car is made for you to put your tools back here so I absolutely love it this is the best pick and pull runner car you can honestly buy for the money if you go get yourself a Honda Civic it's not gonna work if you go get yourself a Tesla this isn't gonna work. And honestly, the biggest thing about practicality for me is that how practical is it? Because the other day when I went for Black Friday to get myself a brand new TV uh, for $200, I mean, hey, you can't say no for a 50 inch TV for $200. I decided to pick it up and I was like, I, I was in the i3 and I was like, will it fit? And honestly, it slid in like butter. And uh, we've got so many other things. We were honestly Black Friday shopping, shoved it all in the trunk. Guys, it went perfectly flat in there. It was absolutely perfect. It's not in the back of the truck where I had to worry anything like that. I don't need to drive my gas guzzling truck to pick up a TV. Anything that I need this car for, it literally do. I put two seats when I picked it up for my 328 um, for the conversion. So I actually fit two driver and passenger seats in the rear with still so much space. So again, for practicality reasons, the i3 just checks all the boxes. It fits everything you need. Need. It fits my pack out stuff, which is absolutely amazing. And the best thing of all, I, I mean, honestly, the best thing of all is the fact that it's electric. The electric portion of this, I actually charge this thing from home. This is the electron charger I ended up picking up that I absolutely love. And I basically, I set the car to only charge when it's at night. Reason being at night, basically the electricity costs little to nothing. Like, like between I think the hours of 1 a.m. to 6 a.m., which that charger will pretty much fully charge that thing in less than I think two or three hours in the middle of the night. Nah, maybe, maybe four hours on honestly, but charging it between those hours and seeing my electricity cost, my electricity bill only went up, I think like $50 the entire month compared to, I used to spend about five to $600 on my daily in gas per month. So the savings of $450 a month can go towards the bills, which I think is just absolutely amazing, especially considering you wanna drive more when you're not spending any money on gas. If you're trying to go out somewhere fun, but not spend any money, you can go to the park, you can go to pick a pole, spend $2 entry fee, you know, that Disneyland for us car enthusiasts. I just think the BMW i3, especially for the money, I think is a bargain. My brother got one, which you guys saw on the cover of this video. It was a gold one or like kind of like a bronze one. He picked that one up from a BMW dealership for $15,000. I actually picked this one up about two months ago. We've, even with all the electricity hype of people trying to get electricity cars and stuff like that, 
I ended up picking this bad boy up for $20,000. This is a 2017, which also comes with extended range. He, my brother actually has extended range as well. He got this for 15,000 extended range from BMW. This is also the extended range from BMW as well, which also means it has a rear engine. So if you do run out of charge, you don't have to completely stress out like, oh my God, where is the charging station? You can just use the engine, go to a regular gas station, fill up the car and actually get straight home. It is absolutely pouring outside. But if I just show you guys inside the i3 right now, it is charging. So will it show us, uh, Right there, I think, actually. So you guys see right here that I actually have 41 miles on the engine and 80 miles on the electric motor. Now, if I actually go and put this thing in eco, um, you guys will see I have 110 miles, not even on a full charge, and 56 miles on the fuel tank. Basically, on a full charge, this thing gets, and this is a 2017 model, again, with extended range. This thing gets 120 mile range just off electricity, which honestly gets me to uh, a bunch of areas, like different cities. I, I go to cities that are about 30 miles out, one direction, 30 miles back, and then another city that's about 20 miles 20 miles back and I don't have to worry about with like electric cars you have to worry about sometimes will I actually make it there and back with the extended range model you don't really have to worry about it because you have the gasoline motor that gets you an additional 60 miles and if you do run out with the 60 miles you can go ahead and just park up to another gas station get more gas and as you're actually driving on the gasoline motor it charges your electricity motor and then you can get back to your electricity and make it straight home no problem so you can honestly make three four hundred I see actually people take the i3 across country um, on just electricity and gas which is super sick I think the reason this car is very unsuccessful in terms of resale value, because these things are $60,000 brand new. When it comes to resale, they go as cheap as fifteen dollars and $20,000. Again, my brother got his for fifteen. dollars I got mine for twenty dollars from BMW dealers with the extended range, which I just think is just mind boggling. I think the fact that it looks like toasters is the fact that it goes for so, so, so cheap. But I mean, but I mean, guys, look at this interior. In terms of practicality, it is the most practical car I've ever owned. We have the heated seats right over here. We have the big navigation. It also comes with a backup camera. I'm actually going to be retrofitting Apple CarPlay here pretty soon. Um, again, navigation, we have the two cup holders over here. We actually have two cup holders right down there as well, but I'm actually using it right now um, for my tools because I'm gonna be heading out to pick a pool as soon as this kind of rain dies out. You guys can also see the headspace is just a lot. It's plenty, got a lot of leg space. Um, we actually sometimes set our fruit over here and actually eat it. It's kind of like a table too. Like the convenience is just so perfect in this car. And uh, again, is it a beautiful car? No, but it, when it saves me money, it does put a smile on my face. I'm not gonna lie. Like literally I make trips that I, I don't even want to make sometimes like oh man this car part's like literally you know an hour and a half away i'm like oh the amount of gas money i'd have to spend you have to factor that into the part cost when you're driving an i3 you don't even think about it because when you're spending 50 dollars extra a month on electricity compared to five or six hundred dollars even seven hundred dollars or trying to make out those extra part runs and hitting a thousand dollars in gas a month which i've done before i literally get better deals driving this car because i'm willing to go out further and get those parts that are you know really good deals because i, I don't have to worry about anything i don't want to worry about gas and speaking about not worrying about anything this thing is stupid reliable for those of you guys who've never owned an electric car yet electric cars are literally stupid reliable the only thing you ever have to pretty much do in terms of maintenance um is your brakes your brake fluids and uh tires that's about it like literally it this car i've rarely used the engine on it which basically means i only have to do one oil change a year um just to kind of make sure the fluids don't sit there for too long and then spark plugs at least once a year um you only got i think like two spark plugs or one spark plug uh maybe actually maybe maybe i don't know i think it's like one or two spark plugs that's like forty dollars um, and then oil in that car, I think it holds little to nothing. Um, and I think the, the, the fuel tank for this car too holds like a gallon of gas. And when you go to the gas station, you're only putting like $8 to get you like 60 miles. Actually, no, I think it's two gallons. So two gallons of gas, um, which is, you know, $10, just to say, $10 will get you um, 60 miles of range, which is not bad, not bad at all. And that's a real 60 miles on the gas motor. And that's a real 120 miles on electric. Typically, when you guys drive sports cars, and for you car enthusiasts, you know what I mean. When you see like something say 20 miles per gallon, you're like, oh, that's line because I never get that. Um, it just the car says that. When I mean 120 miles, I mean 120 miles on electricity. And when I say 60 miles on engine, I mean a 60 miles on engine. That's how like reliable this car is. And I can rely on those numbers to actually take me where I want to go because this thing is pretty rock solid. On the maintenance history of this particular one with 110,000 miles and my brother with has 105,000 miles, the maintenance history on both these cars literally were taken to the dealership the entire time because it's cheap to maintain at the dealership. And at the same time, uh, literally there was not much done to it because there's not really much that needs to be done to it. I'm actually gonna mention one more thing that I know a lot of you guys are gonna be like, Nor, come on, dude, you're doing a little too much here. And that is the fact that I truly believe that this car is kind of built like a supercar. If you guys think about it, definitely not supercar performance, but the terms of the body structure, it's 
definitely funny to say that it kind of looks like a, you know, kind of a supercar. And when I say this, take this with a grain of salt. This is pretty much all like jokes, but it's not jokes because it's real, but it, it's not a supercar, obviously. So for those of you guys who don't know, supercars have an aluminum frame and has a carbon tub. At least like the higher end supercars have carbon tubs like McLarens and stuff like that. So you have a carbon like tub that pretty much surrounds the, the enclosure of the car. And then you have an aluminum frame all around this car. And then typically supercars have engines in the back. So technically this car is an engine in the back, the entire frame. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's all exposed carbon. This is not a wrap. That's real carbon. This entire car is carbon fiber. And so it was just kind of crazy to see that. And then the entire front of this car is aluminum. The reason BMW went with this in the first place is kind of for lightweight. And that's what supercars are all about too. It's all about being lightweight. So the aluminum frame in the front is just absolutely perfect again for being lightweight. The carbon tub is very strong, protects the people in the car, and uh, it is also very lightweight. And then the rear engine is just a super cool thing with supercars. And this car just so happens to have a rear engine. So I just figured that it's kind of like a funny thing. I'm definitely not saying it's, it is a real supercar, but it's kind of like a supercar by heart just because like it does kind of the same aspects of a supercar. Um, so when friends come in here and I say this is my little supercar toaster, um, it's just, you know, it's just kind of cool. So trying to maximize the efficiency of this BMW i3 was my number one goal when I officially got it. When I got the car, I was like, I want to figure out the best way to make this thing like the best daily driver um, with like the cheapest way possible. And the cheapest way possible is not charging it with your normal charger because that does take a lot of electricity and it takes almost an entire like 12 hours to 24 hours to charge it with the cable you get with the BMW i3 and going to the gas station completely defeats the purpose of it. So uh, yeah, the whole point honestly is to maximize the efficiency and charging it at a, you know, one of those electric chargers out there costs a lot of money. It's not really worth it unless you're trying to make it a longer trip. It's convenient, but it, it, it's still cheaper than gas, but it's just not the cheapest thing out there. The cheapest thing out there that I found was this charger right over here that doesn't even need any fancy things to get it mounted into the wall. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into Nor in the past when I actually got this bad boy installed. Now, for those of you guys that are new to the channel, you guys probably saw a lot of VA builds, a lot of crazy BMW stuff. And right now I have an electric charger for an electric car that looks like a toaster. And long story short, uh, this is probably one of the best investments I've ever made. I actually reached out to Electron to see if they can work with us and possibly, you know, work out some kind of deal for this video, mainly because I've been looking into their chargers and this is probably one of the best budget chargers you guys can get for your i3 that not only charges it fast, but saves you a bunch of money because this thing can charge your car at night at those hours that are pretty much electricity is almost free. So I'll be pretty much driving that i3 completely for free. And just like that, guys, we have everything set up and I'm not gonna lie, this looks super cool. I love how everything mounts and everything looks super good. But the thing is, um, my outlet's over there and uh, this outlet cable does not reach that far. This is technically supposed to be mounted next to the 240 volt. For me, in my case, I do not have that. So I went ahead on Amazon and I purchased the necessary things to be able to make this thing work. So this is a 1430 to 1450 conversion adapter. And this is my 25 foot extension cable to get it to go all the way over there. That being said, I also had to make sure that it is the 50 amp model because, because this bad boy is a 48 amp charger. So you gotta make sure it's at least a 50 amp cable or more. So without further ado guys, let's go ahead and get this stuff wired up so we can go ahead and test this on the i3. Hey, yeah, guys, the i3 is officially charging, as you guys can see. Um, and I actually have a set to a timer, again, that only charges it at night, but it's pretty much plugged in. I don't have to worry about it. I can go in and close the garage, and uh, bada bing, bada bang, this thing will charge when I want it to charge. And it will charge super fast at the times where the electricity company charges the cheapest. And for every city and every country, the time zone is a little different. So you, need, you do need to reach out to like your electricity provider for them to give you like the best times. I reached out to mine, they said between the hours of 12 at night and I believe like 6.30 in the morning, those are the best times to charge. Thankfully the i3 only takes like three to four hours to charge. So I typically start around one and it finishes around four to five and it's perfect for me. If you guys have the newer i3, I believe the 2020 
C20s or something like that, those ones do take up, those, those ones do have a larger battery. So I think you'll take up the full overnight charge, but I think it'll still make it within that time frame. And without this charge, I won't be able to actually maximize the efficiency on this car. And also I forgot to mention, for those of you guys who are in California, I forgot to mention that this is a, uh, a clean access vehicle. And yes, I got the ugliest stickers on my bumper. But again, again, this is a daily. There's no reason to make this thing beautiful. And I can't really make it beautiful. <laughs> so it's cute, but it's not beautiful. And I don't care. Cause again, end of the day, end of the day, this thing gets me where I need it and actually gets me there quick because uh, technically, cause it's an electric vehicle, um, you can get those clean access passes and that allows it to hit carpool 24 hours a day. So even if you have no other people in the car, if you have that sticker on your car, you can hit the carpool lane whenever you want. And it just makes this thing even more practical. So say goodbye to traffic too. I mean, guys, this thing is so convenient. So if you guys are weirded out by this video, make sure to smash that like button. And if you guys think that what I'm saying actually makes sense, make sure to smash that like button because come on, I know a lot of us can't really accept this um, because a lot of us love driving, you know, crazy cars, V8, M3, stuff like that. But you guys will be lying to yourselves if you said that I don't care about saving money. I mean, everyone wants to save money and if you get to enjoy what you do and invest more money into what you do and drive something that's, you know, I mean, it's still 2017, it's still a BMW. You still got like nice technology. It's convenient, it's comfortable, it's smooth. It's amazing for the money. And considering that I actually have this thing financed, I pay little to nothing a month, little to nothing down. And I'm not, I don't even have much invested into that car. It just makes my life a whole lot easier. All right, so I'm about to actually conclude this video. Before I actually conclude this video, I do want to give you guys a smaller update uh, for those of you guys who are not subscribed to the channel, for those of you guys who are new to the channel. I am currently building an E91 M3 wagon on my channel. BMW never made an E91 M3 wagon. Uh, so basically, the I, I basically grabbed a wagon shell and I'm converting it to an M3 heart and soul, literally everything. It has the manual transmission. It's going to be absolutely insane. We are trying to save all the V8s, all those high emission vehicles before the government kind of takes it away from us. So uh, yeah, if you guys are excited for my bipolarness and loving two different kinds of cars completely, make sure to smash the like button again. Just smash that like button. It's completely free. <laughs> Anywho, so I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.